Բարիեր եկո հարքերի պարեգամներ ահավասի կանքան մի եվս կհանցի բինք, ինչպես ամեն երեկոն ու ինպես այս երեկո մեր ամեն ուրիա ժամատրավայրին մեջ այս դաղավարը հորիզոն ուղի եծեր։ Հորիզոն հայկական հերուստագայանը գողջուն է ծեզ, ես եվ իմ աշխադագիցները սմիասնապար պարի երեկո գսենք ծեր պոլորին և առաջին հերտին չենք մորնար միշտ։ Կանի մեզ գնդունիք շնորագալություն։ Արեմոդիան ամերիկայի հայտադիկրասեն եագի վարի չէ ու էլ եմ բայրամիանը, պայց եգեք, տեսեք, որ այսօր տեվ գմանանք նույն զիրեններս, պայց մեզի միացած է իրագանության մեջ ամերիկայի հայտադի հանցնախում� It is really nice to have you here because we haven't seen you in a while and there are lots of issues that we can get some details and some clarifications from the chairman of the ANC. Although we have every Thursday, uh, we have uh, William usually, we have William or someone else with William and we talk about the high thought issues, but this is a good opportunity. And the first thing that I'd like to start with, if you don't mind, is the upcoming telethon. Now, we all understand that the telethon is a, after all, is a fundraising event, but not the main goal of the telethon is that fundraising, because that money has a purpose, actually. And I would like to hear from, as I said, the ANC chairman. What is the purpose? The previous two telethons, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we could raise about five million dollars. And I'm sure that those five million dollars serve the purpose. What was the purpose at that time and what is the purpose or the purposes that are going to be served within the upcoming telethon? First of all, it's my pleasure to be here this evening. The pleasure is ours. Uh, please. Uh, thank you for inviting me and sure. uh, happy to talk about the different issues of high tech. With respect to the telethon, uh, we really have a two-fold purpose in pushing forward the effort this year, which is going to be on May 20th, 20th. Sunday from uh, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time mm -hmm. and broadcast nationally uh, in uh, 15 to 20 markets around the country and up and down the West Coast. Uh, the first purpose, uh, as you mentioned, is of course to raise money for High Tut. Uh, and let me come back to that because that's critically important, but your viewers must understand that really a second and if not a primary essential purpose for the telethon is to activate our grassroots, to convey to our community the critical issues of high tut, the issues of the day, and our need for their involvement. Not simply financial contribution, but for their activism. Mm -hmm. you know, we have a growing um, opposition in the, in the form of the Turkish and Azeri lobbies, which have become increasingly active, and we must, frankly, increase our game. We must be better at grassroots activism. As good as we have been, we must elevate our game. So. Uh, a major purpose of the telethon is to educate our community, to activate them, and to have them become involved in the issues that we're involved with. Now, it's also important, in turning a bit to the financial side, to get broad participation. We have in past telethons had as many as uh, 4,000 donors. Frankly, mm -hmm. we're looking this time to significantly increase our participation. Um, I'm shooting for at least 5,000. Frankly, we may well get significantly more than that. And it's very important that every corner of our diaspora in the United States, if not frankly from all corners of the world, participate in this effort to finance our high tide activities. In terms of the purposes, the financial uh, objectives, uh, you're right in saying that we had raised approximately $5 million in our past mm -hmm. two telethons. Uh, about half of that went towards acquiring our headquarters in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, which has turned out to be a very wise financial decision. Uh, it has allowed uh, the endowment to uh, own a building and to generate significant cash flow, uh, which has been very beneficial to the organization uh, on a building that today is uh, not totally but substantially paid off. 
the rest of the money, the other half of the money, uh, has been divided between um, financing our advocacy efforts mm -hmm. uh, on Washington uh, across the array of our high tide activities, uh, and secondly, financing our capital gateway program. Uh, over the past seven or eight years, we've had the good fortune to place approximately 100 young Armenian Americans in public policy and private sector positions throughout Washington. And that's a significant gain, not just for those individuals, but for our community as a whole. Uh, and so as part of the Capital Gateway Program, we provide housing, we provide placement opportunity, we essentially incubate these young Armenian Americans and help them get jobs. So those are the primary areas that our um, funds have gone to. And the reason we are raising money again uh, is because, frankly, the cost of activism continues to go up. The forces that we work against have resources that are multiples of ours. Uh, we'll never match them dollar for dollar. Uh, but we do need to finance our advocacy efforts. And that's why we're having another telethon. Great. And uh, as you just mentioned, the efforts that are being made with or by the people who are uh, facing us or we are facing them, um, they are really spending huge amounts of money. And here is when the importance comes. Well, I think in this case, this Teleton particularly gets uh, more emphasized importance because Exactly as you just mentioned, we don't have to match and we cannot match dollar for dollar, but we still have our just cause. And the good part is ANC works, does everything based on the fact that it is a grassroots organization. Yes. Now, few words about that grassroots, being a grassroots organization before we go to our commercial break. Sure. We have um, all of our strength, all of our political capital is built locally whether it's in, on the ground in Fresno, California, whether it's in San Diego, whether it's in Burbank or Pasadena or Glendale or Hollywood, whether it's in Chicago, my current place of residence, mm -hmm. or Boston, where I'm from, uh, Rhode Island, New Jersey, New York, you know, all of our political capital is built at the grassroots level. And without our 50 local ANC chapters effectively building relationships, with elected officials, uh, with the community leaders in the American political system, we wouldn't, frankly, be able to advance our issues at all in Washington. Uh, when I first took on this responsibility 11 years ago, our executive director, Adam Hamparian, mm -hmm. taught me a very important principle, uh, which I think is worth repeating for your audience, which is that the political capital is built locally, and hopefully we spend that wisely in Washington, that we do a good job with that. So um, without the active involvement of everybody in the community. And I don't mean a few people, everybody in the community. We have to marshal our forces. Our diaspora and Armenians everywhere are our most valuable asset and our most effective asset. And so uh, it's really our responsibility collectively to energize and harness uh, our communities, again, wherever they may be, so that we can be effective, whether it be in the state capitals here in Sacramento, uh, obviously in other state capitals around the country or whether it be in Washington, D.C. And apparently we don't have any other choice or any other options. Harkeli Paragamner, Gisharmagenk Merzeruitse Baron Ken Khachigyanin het, Kovas Neren Amicha Besedo. Uh, Mr. Khachigyan, I would like to know a little more about recently you sent a letter to, to Mrs. Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, regarding her statements uh, about the Armenian genocide. And she responded. Now, what was the impact and what was the difference? Because I believe there was a difference between before the letter and after the letter. Am I right? Yes. Could you please give us some details? Sure. In January of this year, uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, in a town hall at the State Department, in a public setting and a public forum, uh, was asked about the pending French law 
mm -hmm. to criminalize denial of the Armenian Genocide. Uh, in her remarks at that time, she said that uh, she didn't feel that a, such a law would be appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, either in France or in the United States. She referenced issues of freedom of speech. If she had stopped there, her answer, while I would have disagreed with it, uh, would have been one thing. But then she went on to say that the Armenian Genocide was a matter that should be resolved by historians. historians. And, and of course, um, that comment is very hurtful uh, and very inaccurate. Since, among other things, the International Association of Genocide Scholars, which she knows very well, the preeminent group of mm -hmm. scholars uh, devoted to the issue of genocide research, has unanimously opined on several occasions that what occurred to the Armenians at the hands of the Turks was a genocide, now, unambiguously, without question, mm -hmm. and again unanimously. So to the extent that the matter should be addressed by historians, it has been. It's, it's case settled. However, Secretary of State Clinton's remarks uh, were on the record, and, and as offensive as they were, we felt the responsibility to question her on this. So I wrote her a letter shortly after her remarks and uh, posed these issues to her at great length and pointed out the long history of U.S. records from mm -hmm. the United States archives, from the ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Turkey, Henry Morgenthau, from the various consul generals stationed throughout Turkey uh, by the United States. Uh, all of these archives in the record of uh, the United States State Department, which speak of race extermination, of the efforts on the part of the Ottomans to wipe out mm -hmm. the Armenians, and so on and so forth, and point out to her that uh, what I said about the International Association of Genocide Scholars, but further, the extensive and unquestioned evidence in U.S. archives speaking to the genocide that occurred. Uh, her response was simply um, poor. Uh, she attempted to avoid uh, any mention of, of her comment on uh, the historical question. She referenced that her comments were in the context of the French law, but the reality is they weren't. And she had the opportunity when responding to our letter to step back from that. Mm -hmm. If on the spur of the moment she had misspoken or had not completely responded. It would be understandable. Uh, you know, this was an opportunity for her to clarify her, her remarks. She failed to do so. Um, so I call upon the Secretary to come forward. Uh, if she wants to have a public debate about this, I'd be happy to meet her in Washington uh, in public and, and discuss this issue because the facts are on our side and she knows that. She won't accept that challenge. Um, this was a, a, um, a spineless and gutless response on the part of the secretary and extraordinarily disappointing, disappointing, especially from an official when she was running for the presidency of the United States, committed exactly. in writing to our community in response to questions that we posed her, that if she were president, she would recognize the Armenian Genocide. That was one thing that I was uh, trying to refer to, uh, to her 2008 statement when she was running for presidency, when she very, very clearly and openly stated that that was a genocide and she has always backed the resolutions in the Congress or the Senate, and this was a retreat. Now, apparently now there is a policy or a political stance. The Secretary, uh, the Secretary of State of the United States is repeating She's just repeating the Turkish propaganda of denial, which puts her under certain responsibilities. Now, what can we do or sh what should be done to, to make them, after all, understand and understand that this policy is not what the United States exactly needs? Uh, I guess this is the question that we're going to be back with right after our commercial breaks. Thank you. Հարկելի պարագամներ հարցում արդեն ես տված զեղավարոն հնքեն խաչիկյանին, կվերատարնենք կովասներին հետո։
Արդեն ես հարցումով թիմած է բարոնք են խաչիգյանին հարկելի պարագամներ, ինչպես պետք է անել, որ ամերիկայի միացյալ նահանքներու բետական բաշտոնադարությունը հասկնավոր այս կաղաքականությունը ա the State Department of the United States. Yes. This is the first time a Secretary of State has ever taken that position, so it's unprecedented. Uh, and again, I call upon the Secretary to explain and justify her remarks, because in her letter to us, she failed to do so. Uh, we have raised these issues directly. We had a meeting at the White House last week uh, with senior people in the National Security Council and at the State Department and ask them to explain the Secretary's remarks. Frankly, they didn't have an adequate explanation other than to attempt to say she was making reference to the French law. Well, you can look at the video of what she said. You can look at the transcript. Mm -hmm. She went far beyond that and, and really, for no good reason, uh, gratuitously offered uh, the comments, which, as you correctly state, are nothing more than aiding and abetting the, the campaign of Turkish denial of the genocide, which is why uh, it's entirely inappropriate uh, for the Secretary to have taken this position. And frankly, we demand for her to come forward and explain herself and justify why, uh, after decades of unquestioned research, she has the nerve to come forward and say this matter hasn't been resolved by historians. Speaking of justify, in that very same letter, was the Secretary of State able to justify her answer or her response or her opinion about the French law? She fell back on the often cited excuse in reference to the French law of freedom of speech. Uh, she failed to acknowledge that there is a law on the books in most European countries, particularly the Western European countries, criminalizing denial of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. So for all of those countries who think it's appropriate to you know, criminalize, de criminalize the denial Holocaust. of the Holocaust, they certainly should have the same view with respect to the genocide. Uh, and in fact, there are a number of countries where denying the genocide is a crime. Uh, further... And that's not conflicting with the freedom of speech. No, it's not. Uh, you know, freedom of speech is not unfettered in the United exactly. States. The, you know, the often cited example... And it's example, not absolute. That's correct. You can't get up in a crowded theater and shout fire when mm -hmm. there isn't a fire. Mm -hmm. There are limits. In this case, this is hate speech, uh, and it's very hateful, and those are the grounds upon which you know, Western European parliaments have passed the law criminalizing denial of the Holocaust, and it's exactly the rationale that the authors of the French law used. So I disagree respectfully with the Secretary's comments about freedom of speech. You know, perhaps it's not a law that would pass in the U.S. Congress. Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, but it is a law that's on the books in mes many Western European countries. And frankly, the Secretary of State ought to mind your own business about what the French Parliament wants to pass as a law. Uh, Mr. Khachigian, can I stand in front of the White House, which I can, but say in my quietest, nicest way that I want to kill the President of the United States. Is that a freedom of speech or I will get in trouble? You likely would get arrested. Most likely. Most likely. It depends upon how loud you said it and exactly where you said it, but it's a good example. There, there, that is, would not be a defendable freedom of speech mm -hmm. if you're threatening the public safety of the highest elected official in the country. No. And I guess we need to remind the not only the Secretary of State, uh, other people as well, that one more time, uh, there is nothing that conflicts the freedom of speech when there is such a law or such a bill that criminalizes. There is another point I would like to bring it up. Is the word genocide now being a problem because that word wasn't coined during the Armenian Genocide? Of course, the word was coined, was invented by Raphael Lemkin mm -hmm. uh, after... The World War II after and the World Holocaust. War II, but af after the Holocaust. Exactly. It didn't, after the Holocaust. After the Holocaust. Yes. It didn't exist at the time of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, however, when he did so, um, while he obviously 
uh, as a Jew recognized and, and, and was referring to the uh, Jewish Holocaust. He also very, very clearly said that he was motivated to um, come up with this description so that it would be very clear by what occurred to Armenians. Uh, and he used the term genocide to apply to what happened to, to our people. Uh, and as a result, there's no question that it applies. And he coined and made the definition of the word exactly based on the facts of the Armenian genocide. Now that race extermination, uh, the deportation, whatever words and uh, terminology that was used during that time just refers clearly to our today's understanding of a genocide. Yes. Yet the United States officials fail to do so, fail to name things with their real name just because of certain political maybe issues and those political issues as we can see don't have the required basis today. No they don't. Uh, the United States administration, State Department in particular, uh, is clearly providing Turkey a gag rule on US foreign policy when it comes to this issue. Uh, they're not setting the foreign policy of the United States, they're allowing Turkey to set the foreign policy of the United States and that's clearly inappropriate. We know, of course, that many of our good friends in Congress, uh, prominent leaders, uh, both houses uh, of Congress, both sides of the uh, partisan aisle, Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. use the word genocide. Clearly, uh, next Wednesday, uh, April 25th, I'll be in Washington for our congressional commemoration of the Ar Armenian Genocide. And there will be 40 representatives and senators who will stand up and every single one of them will use the word genocide and will call for U.S. recognition uh, of the genocide. I understand when you refer to our good friends, but can I at the same time refer to them as the good friends who are really loyal to the American values? Absolutely. Uh, some of these friends have strong Armenian-American constituencies, but many do not. Many mm -hmm. are there exactly. simply because they view that this is the correct moral position to take. Uh, they have either a few or no Armenian no American Armenian constituents, constituents, but they strongly believe uh, mm -hmm. that the United States should speak with a, cl with a clear moral voice on this issue. And uh, they believe that the Armenian genocide is the first uh, example of genocide in the 20th century and that the United States has a responsibility to call it what it is and to be sure that there are appropriate uh, reparations paid by the perpetrator of that crime, Turkey. I have a couple more questions, Mr. Hachigian, but I guess we have to come back after this break. <laughs> Amerikai Haytadi Hansla Khumpi Adenabet Baron Ken Khachigian Nemezi Hed Mischevor Menk Arit Kunenak Baron Khachigian Nemezi Hed Zerucelu Harkeli Paragam Ner Arit E Kich Mavili Zavalun Temanerov Ner Gayanalu Jamanagi Sahman Neru Mech Mr. Khachigian, recently there was the church resolution that passed the both houses and uh, is there any update about it? Yes. I think the issue is being followed up. The, the resolution passed the full House of Representatives in December of 2011. Uh, back earlier in the summer, it passed the House Foreign Affairs Committee by mm -hmm. a vote of 43 to 1. Uh, even the strongest supporters of Turkey, uh, Congressman Dan Burton, as an example, found it that they had to vote for the resolution. Mm -hmm. Now, we advanced this resolution for several reasons. One, 2,000 Armenian churches were confiscated. Uh, and not just churches, but broadly speaking, properties, including Church schools, uh, monasteries, hospitals, cemeteries, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Uh, and those are properties that rightful, rightfully belong uh, back to our community, to, to the Armenians. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard for any congressman or woman to oppose such a position. Church is like motherhood and apple pie. Christian churches are something that uh, our Congress is simply not going to speak out about. They have historically, on any number of other occasions, they, they've also spoken out about 
uh, other crimes relating to you know Jews or or Assyrians, Muslims, Assyrians, Belgians. other Christians. So it, it was um, not hard to get that support in Congress. We had to do our homework, and again, our grassroots involvement mm -hmm. is critical in that regard. So it passed overwhelmingly in the House committee. Uh, it passed on the floor of the House. Uh, and I might add, sadly, despite the opposition of our State Department uh, and the Obama administration, very, very sad, but it passed uh, with very, very broad support. We've now introduced it in the Senate, and we are hopeful uh, that we can uh, get a hearing in the Senate mm -hmm. Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, I would ask uh, any of your listeners who have uh, friends and relatives in Massachusetts to call in, and for them to call in, to Senator Kerry, who chairs the House uh, Foreign, I'm the, sorry, Senate, the Senate, the Senate Foreign, Foreen Foreen Relations. Relations Committee, and ask him to hold a hearing on this. Um, and we would like to move through the Senate as well. All right, there are lots of issues, uh, Mr. Khachigyan, but I would love to talk to you until, I don't know, tomorrow morning, but time always has limits. So there are a couple more things if you would like to update us about generally what's going on regarding the high tat coordination on a national level. I know there is uh, nagorno karabakh Republic, there is Hayastan, there is the, the aid, the U.S. aid. Yes. So could you please give us an, an Absolutely. update? Uh, of course, we have introduced a genocide resolution in both the House and the Senate, and we are looking to advance those as uh, aggressively as we can uh, alongside the return of churches. Uh, and by the way, the return of churches is, of course, uh, a precedent for establishing the appropriateness of, of reparations, mm -hmm. more broadly speaking. We're starting with the church properties. Uh, the negotiations for Nagorno Karabakh are ongoing, and we, we remain vigilant. In, in being sure that this is settled on the basis of self-determination. Uh, recently in our meeting at the White House, I posed the question of how could the United States support borders that were arbitrarily set by Stalin for political e expediency mm -hmm. as opposed to on the basis of the fact that Armenians have lived there for 4,000 years. Um, and frankly, the country of Azerbaijan didn't even exist uh, before exactly. the Soviet Union exactly. uh, was formed. Uh, there was no good answer coming from the State Department. I would observe that in the past 60 years, roughly 100 new countries have emerged in the world. The membership of the United Nations has gone from roughly 100 to 200. All of those countries have, have evolved as a function of self-determination. So we advance that issue. Mm -hmm. Foreign aid is critically important, uh, and we continue to be vigilant about foreign aid for Armenia and Karabakh, uh, as well as for military assistance to be sure that the United States is not providing greater military assistance to Azerbaijan as opposed to the United States. Uh, another issue that we have started to aggressively pursue is the welfare of the Armenian community in Jamak. Mm -hmm. um, we, of course, have raised the oppression uh, that the Armenians in, in Georgia have um, suffered from, uh, but also we are working to try and improve the economy there. Uh, we are working with the U.S. government, USAID, and the Georgian government to facilitate private investment uh, into Jabak so the jobs are created so that the people there uh, have the ability to support themselves. So that's the broad array uh, of the issues that we're working on in Washington. And actually it's a lot, but there's another point. Even when Stalin said that fact that Nagorno-Karabakh became part of Azerbaijan, it wasn't merged too. Correct. It was, it was kind of an autonomous region Absolutely. within the republic. Absolutely. And under the Soviet constitution it properly seceded from Azerbaijan. Exactly. exactly. So it, has, it should have its independence. Uh, Mr. Khachigian, I'm sorry, but our time, I'm sorry because I didn't want to, uh, for the time to be over, but it is over. But I still have a question we'll have, like maybe 20, 30 seconds. I think there is something else that is going on. There is anti Armenian defamation sometimes now and there or here and there. Absolutely. I guess there is something is being done regarding that point as That's well. That's occurred both in the United States. Uh, the Azeri grassroots organizations took out billboards and advertising in mm -hmm. New York and in Washington defaming Armenians uh, over the events of Kojali. Yes. Uh, and uh, we have reacted vigorously to those. And also in Turkey, uh, we've had racist demonstrations, uh, very inappropriate in Turkey. And we, of course, have called that to the attention of uh, the United States, as well as I know that our colleagues in Europe have called that to the attention of the European Union. So we're very vigilant on, on these issues of anti-defamation, 
and I suspect that uh, they will be ongoing. We'll see more examples. And thanks to your efforts and thanks to the grassroots one more time. Thank you very much, Mr. Khachigian, for being here with us tonight. We would like to have you more frequently, but I understand also your time schedule. And Harkeli Paragam, that I specifically think was Baron Ken Khachigian, the American Hat at the Anstan Humpia, the Nabidi, the Zuitsa, Ansa, Borkan, Arak, Portsit in Karega Chapov. Հարցեր ցնել Բարոն Խաչիգյանի ուշադրության եւ կարելի է չափով մանրամասն բատասխանները ստանալ Հույսովենկոր, այլ արիթոմ Թարցյալ գահաչողինք իրարոհեր զրուցել։ One more time, thank you Mr. Խաչիգյան, նույնպես շնորհակալություն ցեր բոլորին հարկելի փարեգամներ, մեր ձրակրի մեջ կա Օրբան վերջին մասն, իգ որ գներգայացի Կովասներեն հետո։ Այս օրը, ինչ պատահած է ապրիլի 19-ին։ Առ այդ շնորհակալություն նույնպես ցեր բոլորին եւ միշտ Փարինն ցես։